Friday in day five on our journey from Monza to Singapore. I'm in the hub in Brackley right now, but this morning we're actually in Brixworth. Pulkit Gupta, you were wondering what happens to the engines between races. Well, this morning I was speaking to Owen Jones, who's head of performance and controls at Mercedes High Performance Powertrains. Um, so this is the main build shop. Um, I guess the big activity this week is, all, is preparation work for Singapore. So all our race engines have come back from the last race in Monza, the last European race in Monza. Uh, we're doing servicing and preparation before they get boxed and shipped out to Singapore next week. Uh, and we won't see them again then until the end of the season. So um, it's sort of farewell and good luck at that point. So we're standing in front of the sub-assembly now. What goes on in there? So this is where we build the sub-assemblies before being supplied to the main build, so the pumps, the cylinder head, the fuel system, all the turbocharger, MGUH assembly, they're all assembled in here and then they're passed off on rigs before being provided to the main build to be assembled into a complete power unit. So this is our main manufacturing hall where we make all the parts for our power unit. Um, just about everything's made in here for the race engines and also development engines. So we've got a few more engines to make for this season. Uh, and then we'll be into making the first prototype engines for next season. We make valves, cams, crankshafts, cylinder heads, cylinder blocks, uh, the turbo, make. not much, turbocharger, compressor, all the motors are made here, the battery packs. So yeah, it's... Uh, Pretty much covers it all. The whole lot, yeah. Very impressive facility. <laughs> So what's going on right here, right now? Well this is our main engineering office, so all the different engineering functions are based here and uh, at the moment really it's just checking over the last few details um, before Singapore, making sure everything's right before that race and the remaining flyaways and also quite a bit of attention now already focusing on the power unit and the, the engine for next season. So we're in a top secret location right yeah. now, not many people get to go inside the dyno. What is going on here right now? Well, this is one of our transient dynos and right now we're doing the preparation work for the Singapore Grand Prix next week. So before every race we'll run a simulation of the circuit, uh, the lap profile on the dyno and we'll prepare the calibrations, the energy recovery and deployment schedules and just make sure that the power unit is fully optimised before we get to the racetrack. I'm guessing there's a lot involved, a lot of sleepless nights. Yeah, we start, try and start at least a week before the event. Um, and also during the event itself we'll have the engine and the power unit available on the dyno so that there, if there are any issues raised during free practice we can bring them back, play them on the dyno and, and fix them ready for the next session. What an incredible tour. We've never had access like that before so I hope you enjoyed it. We're back to Brackley now but just before leaving Owen showed us something amazing. So keep watching, it's coming soon. After a short drive through the English countryside it's back to Brackley and we headed up to the design office because Jorge Santa Maria on Twitter wanted to know how a part is designed. So he spoke to Ashley Way, head of mechanical design. We're all about Monza to Singapore this week, so Ashley, we thought it would be really great to talk to you because you were actually up on the podium in Monza. How was that? Yeah, uh, incredible. Um, it was a, a, obviously a very dominant race for us, so it was a, a great uh, podium to be on because we had a, a really strong win in front of Ferrari's home crowd, which was, was amazing. Uh, and it's also uh, quite an honour really to go up because the race team and uh, the factory are in some sense two different facets and there are, uh, the race team is kind of a, a tip of the iceberg. There are so many unsung heroes back here in the factory that work hard towards the championship. Uh, so to be able to go up and represent the factory was, was an amazing thing to do. Uh, it was a great honour. And then your particular department here, you are responsible for the mechanical aspects of designing parts. So for us, uh, mechanical group, we uh, fun focus on suspension, uh, car controls, things like steering, brakes, uh, pedals, those kind of things. Um, as I say, for us, we, we're looking at some reliability stuff, which luckily there was very little to concentrate on. We've got some upgrades coming for the coming races, so we'll concentrate on them to get some more performance on the car, keep, keep our performance advantage. Um, but very much looking at next year. So we're looking at layouts of next year's suspension, looking at how all integrates into the car and, and, and really very much getting into the detail of some of that already. It would be amazing if you could show us actually like, how you work on parts and how you design them. So this is uh, part of the front suspension, it's the front push rod. We start usually from having uh, some basic concepts of the suspension and we build the parts around that. We'll be working with the aerodynamics department to try and get the best shapes for the aerodynamics of the car and also structurally as well, trying to make the parts strong enough, make sure that they're not going to break on the car. 
uh, and then we started to build these up on, on the CAD system. Initially it will start the schemes, we'll go through uh, structural checks and make sure everything's strong enough uh, and then convert that into sort of individual parts, individual drawings and that then heads off down to the production department for manufacture. Yeah. Funny you should say that because we're actually going to head down there now and look at how a real pod fits in. Fantastic. We're just up in the design office looking at a push button up being designed on the screen. We're now here with the physical thing. What are you doing to it? So as we're in the middle of turnaround, this is uh, pretty much just a reference check. Um, to see if the part has deteriorated at all throughout the race weekend. Make sure it's still good enough to go back on the car for the following race. If it was a new part, we'd be doing a predetermined mileage and potentially doing a test to destruction to, uh, to make sure the model correlates with what the actual part has produced. And what's the next step going forward from here? So this will finish up here. We'll check our results, make sure the stiffness is within the tolerances that we predefine. Then this will go through to scanning, where they'll do an ultrasonic scan on it, make sure the bonds are still good, make sure there's no delaminations. And then from there on, it'll go back to live stores and be built up for the next car. So we might actually see this part in F1 car next weekend. Absolutely. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. At the beginning of the week, we saw the freight return from the final European race of the season in Monza on the race trucks. But how does it now go all the way out to Asia? That's what Chris Wall was wondering on Facebook. So I spoke to Mark Shepard, freight team leader, to find out. This all looks like a really serious setup just to transport some freight over to Asia. What is going on here? So basically, uh and all of the teams in the UK are obliged to uh, fly all their air freight out sort of under known consigner status so that it's all uh, security screened and everything. So what we have to do here is we have to um, basically run training courses for all our personnel that do packing of the air freight and then they, um, uh, we have to put the security fence up, there's ID cards, we've got security guards down the end there restricted access all round oh. before we're allowed to send all the air freight out. So. Complete setup. And yeah. how many boxes, how many tons, what are the numbers being carried over? Um, it, in simple terms, uh, we have 15 ULD pallets, which is the large air freight pallets, and we have approximately 42 tons of air freight equipment going out. Obviously we do sea freight as well, and that already went eight weeks ago, so we sent out three 40-foot containers full of heavy-duty equipment eight weeks ago to Singapore. So. Wow. And everything that's in here right now, when did this start? Uh, so this started as soon as the trucks came back, so when they did the offloading and all the car parts went into the factory, all the equipment went into a secure building and then they started cleaning, turning equipment around and then we started the loading process up yesterday. All the security fencing went up yesterday, it'll be up for two or three days and then uh, we go from there. Have exactly. you been pressed for time at all or has it been smooth running? Uh, it's, it, it's normally quite frantic and I must admit today has possibly been one of the best pack-ups for the car chassis and everything. All the race team boys, we've sort of got to about two o'clock in the afternoon now Personal and we're, yeah, we're uh, yeah, looking for a, a lap record on that. With the whole rain today, has that affected you in any way? Have you had to stop throughout? Uh, no, it's been intermittent and most of our equipment's inside now. Um, so it hasn't affected us too badly. It might do later on when we're loading trucks up there. Well, I hope, let's hope there's no more rain today. Yeah. Great, I'll let you crack on with everything. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. And that's it for the first five days of our Monza to Singapore series. Hope you've enjoyed it so far. We'll be back on Monday, but in the meantime, be sure to check out any of the episodes you might have missed. See you soon. Mm -hmm.